What I saw wasn't human. Oh, my God! <laughs> Very tall. And what's more, it saw me. This thing. This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Welcome back to another episode of Rawhead Rex in Pieces. I say another episode, this might be the first one, I don't know. I've not yet put all the episodes into a randomizer and checked out the order. That's right, it's crazy, it's podcast under the stairs. We're doing something, but we're doing something in the most difficult way to do it, which is the only way I approach anything. You should watch me play chess or risk to understand that I will... I will Fuck things up royally. Anyway, this uh, In Pieces series is a sub-series of the podcast on this is where we take a beloved movie, in this case, Rockhead Rex from 1986. I separate it up into five-minute reviewable chunks. Nice and easy to digest. And then I get a guest host on, someone from somewhere in the world, somewhere exotic, that will sit down and discuss those five minutes with me, somehow elongating those five minutes to 20 plus, because, once again... We'll love to talk. The kicker, like I said at the start there, is that the order in which they'll be released is not linear to the movie. They are random, so this could be your first one, this could be your last one, this could be one in the middle. Joining me to discuss minutes 35 through 40 on this episode is my good buddy Jeff Lon. How you doing, Jeff? I'm doing better now. Clearly doing? doing better now after watching this segment. Well, let's 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 be <laughs> honest here. Let's be honest here. Rawhead Rex isn't a great movie. However, in a world where Rawhead Rex doesn't exist in the form that it does just now, you don't have Hellraiser. So, yeah, that's true. Yep, yep. And also, the longer I've watched this movie this week, the more I'm convinced that the actor who is in the Rawhead Rex suit, who, unless I'm peddling lies and rumors is actually the Predator in the Predator movies. Um, <laughs> that doesn't happen either one year after this. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is definitely something. So we could say we're grateful. I, I think, we, I think <laughs> we kind of have to be. I think I think at this stage, Clive Barker wouldn't have been like, never again will one of my tomes land in the hands of an amateur. I will make Hellraiser. Like, that, like that wouldn't have happened and like I say this guy here literally just dons another alien suit and recreates let's be honest here at least one or two scenes from Predator are in this movie which is a year before it so <laughs> we can claim yeah. that they ripped off this movie Predator ripped off Rawhead Rex that's a, a fact stated by Podcast Under the Stairs in 2023 so there you go just doing that see as soon as you put it in the internet it's true Jeff that's yeah. I see how it works now. Yep. You should hey, listen, I knew a while ago that's why I started that Duncan has a nine inch cock rumor. Um <laughs> which I mean is now is now fact and if it measures wrong then your measuring tape is wrong. 
Um, so <laughs> um, we <laughs> we have a lot of fun to do here. We're doing minutes thirty-five through forty. This one is dialogue heavy. It has um, as a tiny little bit of rawhead rex and, and and no more, but it does have a couple of a couple of scenes which are primo rex. Um, this one will open at the 35 minute mark with Rawhead's open mouth going Aah! as uh, poor Andy runs towards him. It will finish at the 40 minute mark with uh, David Duke's character walking into a police station. Um, let's let's get into this one because uh, this one is a, a hodgepodge to be honest of a five minutes. So in the previous five minutes we had um, Andy and his girlfriend who really wanted to tell him something important uh, being chased by Rawhead Rex through the woods and as they just think they're almost getting away with it um, Andy runs right into Rawhead who, like I said, is full mouth open, full cock eyes, animatronics, <laughs> uh, red lights beaming everywhere Arrgh! and then um, the girl just keeps running and she keeps running and running and running. She comes out at a trailer park where she's greeted by a crowd. And then we get a couple of older characters who have all the patience of, I'll be honest, old people. And the first man's like, what is it? B because, by the way, I'm going <laughs> to do terrible Irish accents all the way through this. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I, I get, they get worse as, the, as this goes on. Um, and she's like, oh, 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 oh. And, then the, and then another old man says, what is it for God's sake? Like that, see, see how I like just instantly became Irish in your ears right now. Uh, uh, you had me fooled. <laughs> and the girl says, oh, "It's Andy," and she goes to point in the direction of what she's came from. But when she lifts her hand, she inexplicably didn't realise that a severed Andy's hand is still in her hand, which makes her obviously scream more. She throws it on the ground. Everyone's <laughs> screaming, and uh, that's the end of that scene. Um, because we're then going to join our favourite cardigan-wearing American writing the weirdest book that will never sell anything, hero, David Duke, as he's out for a wee walk. And um, if this isn't an advert, Jeff, for yeah. Don't Smoke, I don't know what is, because this man's like, you know what, it's Marlboro time. So he <laughs> sparks up this bad boy, takes one, it inhales once, and uh, he hears some weird noises, he turns around, and then I think what he thinks he sees is a rawhead rex on top of a hill. Um, that can't be right, rawhead rexes aren't real. Uh, but I love his, his reaction here is, it must be the cigarette, so he takes it out and stamps on it. Which, I, I've, I've never smoked, so I can't comment on this one. But I don't yeah. I think that's what happens when you smoke a cigarette. I don't think you see pagan demons running on top of hills. No, I think that'd be more like meth or something <laughs> like that. But I, I mean, I could just go ask somebody around my neighborhood. I'm sure they they probably do it. Not this a is good, one of these place. meth cigarettes that yeah. people are occasionally <laughs> yeah. slinging in a pack. Yeah. Like you're saying, an uh, anti-smoking promotion here. But I also see it as an anti-say-something-important promotion because, <laughs> you know, she had to tell that guy something important and look what it caused. Yeah. That's why I've never said an important thing in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Rawhead Rex, an advertisement. Yeah, for... I don't want to get Rexed, man. I just yeah, said, uh, I don't want to get Rexed. <laughs> <laughs> like, so the next time you're about to tell your significant other something important, just take a second and think to yourself, what happens if I got Rexed? You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. <laughs> Just pull back. Um, I love this scene because he looks at Rex and he doesn't behave like a not. He blames the cigarette instead of doing what I would do, which is soil myself and run away screaming. <laughs> um, but he kind of looks at the cigarette. He's like, what the fuck? Throws it on the ground, stands on it, and when he looks back up, wouldn't you believe it? Rawhead Rex has pulled a Michael Myers. He's just vanished. He yeah, there. he professional level... Uh... Vanishing yeah. act right what, there. Which I want to stress is not Rawhead Rex Forty in any other part of this movie. Like he's not a subtle killer. He's not like I will hide behind the bushes until they come round. He <laughs> he's not like that at all. <laughs> Most of this movie, he's just like and like attacking <laughs> people. So it, it is very funny at this point here. He's like, I could do something right now, or 
I could sneak by. And also, it's not like difficult for him to hide. He just needs to walk essentially five paces on the other side of that hill. Any bit of like it's like. like- it's like he respect his character in a video game or something. He's like, you know what? I'm I've been working on my stealth combination, but now I'm gonna just go berserker and I'm just going to plow through every possible item and uh, kill I, everything. I love the fact that like the way you've set this up now is Rawhead Rex is seen and then he presses like like the fucking what <laughs> like he basically presses L three and then ducks. Um, Sometimes the way he walks in this feels very video game, like what you need to do on the the like set camera angles and stuff like that. You're yeah. like, uh oh. Yeah, the, <laughs> there's, there's parts of this where I'm like that. Were they just pulling him around on a trolley? <laughs> Does yeah. he kind of feel like maybe he didn't have mobility from the waist down? Um, so like David Duke obviously is like, oh, what the fuck? So he retreats. Um, and in the woods, there are villagers searching. In fact, not only they're searching, but they're being led by a man with a gun. And you know that man's serious. He's basically barking orders. He's like, y'all stay back there. I've got a gun. And they're all like, you've got the gun. And he's like, I've got the gun. And um, they continue searching in the woods. But then we're going to cut again. And um, David Duke's wife uh, is sitting with the kids. She's trying to calm the daughter, but she's sitting with the kids. And they're waiting Ooh. for for Duke himself to return, and he does. He comes in the door, and uh, she says to him, "What's happening out there?" Uh, and he says, "There's something going on up in the hills," which yeah. that's what he saw. That's not what's actually happening, right? That's just him. Like there was like I smoked a cigarette. I saw a fucking pagan, yeah. um, and she's like, uh, "We were worried," and he looks at his daughter. Uh, his daughter is morbid as fuck because she's like six. And he's like, looks right. at his daughter and he's like, is that why you're still up? And she's like, is it an accident? And he says, I don't know. And she's like, is there blood? And I'm like, right, we need to sit this child down with a therapist. <laughs> like, spend some money on this. Sort these issues out. How does she know this? It's a bit weird. Um, yeah, she is a bit weird. She's no, uh, she's no, um, <laughs> oh. Bob from... Oh, not Bob. Well, she's, she's no Bob, but uh, she's she's up there with some strange factors. So. Every every time, every time we mention a child, we must mention Bob because that is the you benchmark know, for all te- uh, all terrible child actors. And technically, it's not the actor; it's the voiceover, which that actor <laughs> will constantly tell you that's not my voice. <laughs> you hate yeah, the voice. I mean, you I don't hate definitely... me. I would definitely defend myself against that too. Like I, I can't be going down like that. Be like, there goes Bob again. Oh God! No, like, and the only other comparison I could think of to Bob would be uh, the grown man playing a child in Burial Grounds. So. Oh Jesus Christ! Oh, <laughs> Burial Grounds might be a future NPCs, by the way, because that, like, oh, regardless God. what you land, you're landing gold. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I mean, you you can't lose. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, David Duke's like, I didn't see, so I don't know. And the wife's like, all right, pumpkin, all the excitement's over. No, it's not. <laughs> like, there's people still out there on the hills hunting for dead bodies and a pagan creature, but she's like, it's time to go to bed. And then we switch back over, and then this is the, like, this is the first time I've made a note of Right, by the way, this guy plays the Predator. The Tim's folk come across a body strung up like the Predator strings up bodies. Oh yeah, that's right. 100%! They've just like, Predator ripped off raw head Rex. Is it I mean, yeah, yeah, they did. They did. I mean, that doesn't make me like uh, Predator any less, or this anymore, <laughs> but... Uh, you know, we're saying that, but later on, no Rawhead Rex will be standing on a hill holding a severed head, and the only thing that's missing is the spinal column. Predator, right. yeah. Predator <laughs> ripped this fucking movie off. So, all, like all these scenes are shot in the woods. Predator ripped this movie off. Granted, it was a hotter climate, but Predator ripped this movie. Arnold Schwarzenegger, we're coming for you, baby. It's we're been, for you. it's been, uh, it's been uncovered, and it's uh, clearer than we've ever. Ever had it now? Like it they have the this past. movie has David Duke in it. Yeah. Right. Bill Duke is in. Is Bill yeah. Duke isn't it? He's in Predator. I'm just yeah. saying, it just feels like one movie <laughs> copied the other. Yeah, yeah. I see. I see it now. 
<laughs> I, I like the fact that your resolve has worn down so much that you're like that we need to get off this point right now and move on Duncan so I'm not going to argue with you but I, I appreciate you Jeff you, you, you're one of those guys that's like that I just need them to ride out this conversation and then they'll move on and I will because I'm going to do it right now uh, so uh, <laughs> we switch back to the villagers who have obviously come across like I say this upside down predator hung brody and and the first villager now because they don't have names there's villager other villager and third villager is what i've called yep. them uh, so villager says can someone fetch the police and that's that was worse than all the other accents but that's <laughs> kind of how he sounds and the other villager says i'll go back and check um and then the third villager says who is it it's not the johnson boy and first villager says god knows and I'm like, what are we doing here? Um, so the second <laughs> villager, who the one that was going to wait for the police, he like actually goes to go and find the police, and he takes about four steps, and then he stops and looks over, and wouldn't you know it, he finds the Johnson boy, or what's left of him, and he calls out to everyone, over here! Um, the body is disemboweled and decapitated, although we don't see that, we just see a mess of organs. And that's literally it. The camera pans back to when it's panning between shots. It just pans back to exactly the same frame. Like, yes. Yeah. They yeah. were wasting time at all in this one. Like, we need to get it released without cuts. <laughs> let's just use the same shot again. They're like, but maybe we could show more of the body. No, let's use the same frame. Um, why would we do that when we don't have to? Yeah, why would we do anything we don't have to? Which, uh, to be honest with you, I'm with that sentiment. That is how I've been living my uh, 41st <laughs> year on this planet, is why should not do anything that I don't want to do? And I get the feeling yeah. it's going to get more like that the older I get. It's not going to yeah. get any better. Yeah, I, I feel it. It's coming <laughs> to me too, don't worry. Uh, so David Duke is uh, looking out his window as his wife is putting the kids to bed. And we get this... I've written here, this is a Duncan line here, we get this rad shot, because I'm still living in the 80s, we get this rad <laughs> shot of Rawhead on the same hill holding a severed head, just like the Predator holds that spinal cord head as well. Is yeah, this a, a rip-off of Predator? Uh, I'm sorry, is Predator a rip-off of Rawhead Rex? Yeah, I mean, he even does like a, I mean, I don't know if we hear it or not, I can't remember, does but he does roar. a growl almost, yes, right? Yeah, the same okay. roar. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so what? The, come on. The only now, thing what, Rawhead Rex doesn't have. This is breaking have, my mind. Stop. <laughs> the only thing Rawhead <laughs> Rex doesn't have is a scene where David Duke is over the top of him going, You are one real ugly idiot. And Rawhead Rex goes, Motherfucker. That's literally the <laughs> only thing this movie does. It's basically the same. If Rawhead Rex had a self destructive device on him, this would be the same fucking movie. Yeah, I mean he's got the he's got the red light of death. That's that's almost the same thing, sort of, right? If Jesse the Body Ventura had been in Rawhead Rex, it may have been a better movie. That's the only thing that could have made it better. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I mean uh, that, that bumps it to a five out of five yeah. any day. Yeah, hey, listen, this movie ain't got time to bleed. Um so anyway, <laughs> like <laughs> Oh, I don't know what's happening. So anyway, anyway, <laughs> um, we've lost that. So the the the, all, the villagers all run across this disembowelled and decapitated body, and then we switch. And uh, like I said before, David Duke is uh, looking at a window. Rawhead Rex is standing on the hill with a severed head. And we fade to black as we come back on the two farmers who were helping trying to move, as I've written here, the giant stone phallus from the ground because. Let's be honest, that's a cock rock. Yeah. As <laughs> man, you can you can see the fucking veins, right? You can yeah. see the veins. Yeah. When you get struck by a lightning, it glows purple, right? I mean, at the tip, I'm like, what are we fucking doing here? You know what I mean? Like and it's Clyde Barker as well, so it's all penis. Oh yeah, it's all imagery. It's all, all imagery. imagery. <laughs> I'm like, it's all penis. You're like, it's all imagery. Your <laughs> sim's more sophisticated than me. Um, so yeah, so the detectives arrive. There's a dead farmer from the start of the movie and he's lying beside the now on its side giant stone phallus. Um, and detective, now once again, I don't know their names, so I have detective and detective two. Detective is the main detective. Detective two does more talking in this scene. Uh, so detective says, eh, uh, how long has he been dead? I'm changing the accents up now. And Detective 2 says, uh, I'd estimate under 24 hours. Apparently, he was trying to move this stone. 
which I, I, I don't understand what is that apparently he was trying to move this stone. Surely it Pretty should evident. be. Yeah, surely it should have been. Apparently he moved this stone because it's no longer vertical. It's lying horizontal. Right. I would give the man his credit, even on his deathbed, I would be like that. That man moved that stone. <laughs> yeah, no, they, he, he just was like, oh, this lazy guy. He was... <laughs> like you, I oh. was trying to move the stone. They tried to move it with a tractor and they couldn't, and this man single handedly moved it. Hero. And dead. Yeah. Hero. Um, the detective answers him back by saying, witnesses? And detective number two says, two. They're over there now. They were helping him clear the field. When they left, he was fine. This is number three. And that's why I remember at this point, they're right. This, this, this movie has a body count of three already at the 30 minute mark, 35 minute mark, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Like they're, they're doing quite well here. Um, it's morning time. David Duke has recovered from his meth cigarette. And he's out walking up the high street saying hi to the villagers who do not fucking answer him. Ignorant bastards. He's like, he's like morning. And they're all like... So he walks yeah, past. I mean, I totally get it. I mean, I... Growing up, I was never really a morning person. Uh, so, <laughs> I, you know, if somebody talks to me, I kind of want to, like, slap him in the face, too. But that's, that's the non-vocal equivalent of a slap in the face. So I once uh, travelled across to stay with a podcast friend of mine in Virginia yeah. and uh, you know the heart of America and mm-hmm. um, I got up early in the morning because my time difference is all weird and I got up early at like, like 6 in the morning or something, put the running gear on that I did pack because I'm diligent and I went out for a morning run which by the way is a terrible idea in September in Virginia which is just basically like, you know, like you might as well just want to cook yourself like running in an oven. <laughs> and I went out for a run and this person lived relatively rural and as I was running up this hill there was this old couple out walking and I thought you know what I'm going to I'm going to be I'm going to be I'm going to do something I wouldn't do in my own country I am going to acknowledge their existence <laughs> by saying <laughs> good morning and giving them a little wink and a nod and I was like good morning wink and a nod and you would have thought what I'd said to them was I'm going to rape your dead body <laughs> um, like their their faces were they were horrified and like they kind of clutched like the other side of the road they kind of clutched their arms up at their chest and visibly looked shocked and I ran was past. it the accent? <laughs> Well, this is the, I don't fucking know. So apparently, when I got when I got back to the, the house and my podcast friend woke up, um, Danny, if you're listening to this, we're talking about you. Um, and I was like, that. he was like, you go for a run. I was like, totally went out for a run. I was like, I was chatting to your neighbour. He's like, oh, <laughs> how did you get on there? And I was like, well, they looked horrified. And he's like, well, one, they're not very nice. They're kind of gun-toting, Trump-loving. Yeah. Americans, right? Like very like red, red, red state. And I was like, all right. He's like, two. You like from their point of view, they are like very like right wing Christian, and you have holes in your ears. You're covered in tattoos. You have a foreign accent, and you're coming bounding up a hill, red faced at them. I was like, <laughs> you may, you may have a point. You may have a point. Uh, this is why I don't speak to anyone when I'm anywhere. Uh, so. <laughs> Anyway, as an aside, um, Detective Number Two says there's uh, two that were over there to help them clean, blah, 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 blah. So David Duke's walking up the street. Villagers are not speaking to him. He walks up to a police officer and says, Excuse me, I'd like to report something I saw last night. The officer says, Yeah, go in there. David Duke walks into the station. Do you know what, Jeff? That is the end of our five minutes. Ow. It flew by. It flew by. At 25 minutes of recording or whatever we're at now. <laughs> uh, right, let's, uh, let's swing back to do you have a favourite line of dialogue, a particular sequence in these five minutes that we've covered? I'd like to say I do, but I don't. I'm not I'm not going to lie. It's pretty bad. I'll be honest, this is one of these ones where I feel like the, the best that I get out of is a ludicrous act of the girl still holding her severed boyfriend's hand and not yeah. realising she's still I think even if I was like shocked to the point of I didn't really understand reality I would understand the weight of a hand I was holding which was severed yeah yeah 
big big difference uh, between a hand connected to a body and a hand not connected to a body. You would think, you would think. Plus, she was running, so every time she was bringing her hand up, you would think she would see her boyfriend's hand, like disconnected from him and her hand. But no, no. So it's probably my favorite thing. This is a non-event, really. This is one of these ones where we're kind of post, like a proper death scene, and we're dealing with a lot of villager shit, um, which yeah. is fun. Uh, but it like it leads us into um, the next five minutes, which is glorious David Duke trying to tell the police that there's a monster out there. The police not listening to him, and then his son being eaten because of it, which yeah. kind of feels like the police were a bit lazy or negligent. Um, so yeah, right. I mean, if you think about it, though, if it was American police, they would have just shot everybody around. So. Well, not, not necessarily, <laughs> not necessarily white people, but um, and it's yeah. and it's Ireland yeah. we're talking about here, <laughs> all, all white people. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, right, um, Jeff, this has been awesome as always. You, my friend, have a podcast. You're out there doing shit. People should be checking it out. Uh, pimp your wares. Where can people check out your stuff? Yeah, we're uh, Night of the Nerdy Laser Podcast. Me and my buddy Richard uh, are a weekly show. So we cover basically whatever pops into our head as far as horror movies go. Uh, I think we just did, it was funny you brought it up. We just did Hellraiser you versus did, Hellraiser. Yeah, yeah we did right. do it versus. So um, timely, I guess. Um, but yeah, you could check us out on pretty much all the podcatchers. And we're on, I think all the social media i'm pretty much getting sick of social media so oh, i God. tend to Amen. let him handle all that but uh yeah we're out there give us a look find us follow and hey somebody actually emailed us one time because we're we're 110 episodes in and i don't think we've gotten any emails as we're <laughs> so he either has a real good like filter on the email thing or just people don't care which is fine I do like this idea, like an email coming in. You guys are like, "Is that we? We got one, and it was a guy that was like, your show sucks. You only have sixty viewers.' And we're like, "Hell yeah, we have sixty viewers." It's like <laughs> Ghostbusters. We got one. Let's you away in the Ecto one. I love it. Absolutely love it. And the thing about it is the way I've always put this way is like, I think I was maybe. Notwithstanding the Baz episodes, I think I was about two years in before I actually started getting like some sort of feedback, and it was because I kept mentioning it on every fucking episode. Yeah, like speak to me, um, and then people finally did. And to be honest, a lot of people don't now. They've kind of tapered off. The numbers yeah. are still there, but they just don't interact. And to be honest, I'm kind of okay with that. So. <laughs> less, less you have to worry about. Yeah, I've got too much to do than be checking email accounts that I log into like once a month maybe um, which is a problem I should probably escalate <laughs> that and do more but uh, yeah so go check out Jeff's show um, it's awesome he's awesome you've obviously heard him here uh, Jeff will either be back on an upcoming episode or has already been on an episode already who fucking knows time is a flat circle uh, all I will say though is thank you very much for checking this episode and we will speak to you next time